Good morning, friends. Welcome to Friday. Um, I'm here just to check in, touch base with you all, give you a, an inspiring story, and then I want to sing you a song, a benediction that I'm going to give you at the end. But before we do that, uh, I wanted to draw your attention to what's happening this Sunday. We are having our online service at 9 a.m. It'll go live on the website, the um, church website. You can check there. You can also check Facebook and YouTube. Um, our team, our admin team will send you an email very soon with links that you can click on and you can sit down with your family or wherever you are and watch and worship with us. Um, Daniel is in Delaware and he is with his family back there, but he's bringing a word of hope through song and encouragement and prayer. And then I have a word from the book of Philippians that we're gonna be stepping into. Um, but today I wanted to share a story with you, just where I'm seeing God working in our midst and I'm seeing God working in our little community. I, as many of you know, um, my family lives in Benicia and we live right on First Street. First Street is the the main hub where all the local businesses are. It's where the energy and life and vitality of Benicia happens every day, day in and day out. Um, and we live upstairs above an art studio. And so we get to watch cars coming in and cars leaving and people walking by and interacting. It's, it's great for our family rhythm and dynamic. And we've uh, developed a lots of relationships with people in the three years that we've been there, local businesses, and have gotten to know people really well. And just on our out and about, walking around, connecting with people. And because of this situation that we find ourselves in now through this pandemic, um, it's affecting a lot of local businesses. Small, uh, small shop owners rely on people coming in and visiting their stores, um, doing business. And this, so this has created a lot of anxiety for people. We have lots of people who are afraid, worried, full of anxiety and uncertainty about what's coming next and how they're gonna pay their rent on their business. Are they gonna have a business months down the road? We don't know how long this is gonna go. And so we've been hearing stories and have been checking in with people and have been doing our part as a family, like what can we do to help? How, how do we um, continue to support local business, but then also how can we help these business owners in practical ways? And so we have a, a dear friend who owns uh, an antique store in Benicia and um, she is struggling. She's um, full of fear and anxiety and lots of tears and there's been lots of conversations and prayer and uh, what are we going to do and how are we going to respond to this so i was sharing this story yesterday with a friend of ours here from hillside and um giving her some backstory to all that's been happening in this store owner's life and this person who uh, was listening to me she decided to respond by just a radical act of generosity and um has informed me that she wants to pay for this particular store owner's rent to cover it for a month. And that is a tremendous gift that she has given to this person. This person, we shared this story with her yesterday, called her and told her what we had learned. And she just broke down in tears and wept, just tears of gratitude and overjoyed and she expressed, uh, she's like, please let this person know um, how deeply touched I am. If there's anything she wants to know about the store, or if there's anything I could do for her. I mean, just, uh, you know, when you're given such a generous gift, like sometimes the response is, then how do I give back? And, and what do I do in response to this generosity? And, and so she was completely overwhelmed by this, by this gift of generosity. It's like a, a 50 pound weight had been lifted off of her shoulders so that now she can think about what's what's the way forward? How, how am I gonna respond to this? And sometimes when we're trying to figure out the way forward and, and we're carrying all this weight of responsibility and uncertainty, we, we can't think straight. It's like all we can do sometimes is just get up and take one step at a time. And sometimes that's the best we can do. It's just take one step forward each day. And so this act of generosity has completely overwhelmed this person. And I think about 
what an opportunity we have, friends, to do the same for people, to be listening, tuning in to where the Spirit is leading us, how the Spirit is leading us, um, maybe there's things that Jesus will reveal to us, even if we're quarantined, ways that we can practically help people during this time of uncertainty, even beyond ourselves, even beyond what we're doing to take care of our own families, which is big enough. But are, are there things that God is inviting us into to take care of the people around us? And I think we've been given a really amazing gift and opportunity for the church, the greater church in the world to truly be light in the world, to be light in a time of great darkness and great suffering. And I've been thinking a lot about suffering and thinking a lot about people's suffering and, and the things that people carry. And, and I've often times have asked myself, I, I want to be full of love and compassion. In fact, one of, one of my greatest fears is that I would lose my compassion for humanity. I, I don't wanna lose any level of compassion. I want to have the deepest kind of compassion, the same kind of compassion that I see in Jesus, that, that kind of gut level compassion that just drives and, and motivates and is the engine behind everything that we do, that it just moves us into deeper realms of others suffering, to, to co-suffer with others, to step into the pain with them, not to try to fix it, but to enter into it with them, be present in it with them. And I oftentimes wonder, like, well, how, what's the pathway to great love? How, how do we become love? How, how, do we, how do we become like the incarnation of love and, and give it fervently to people around us? And I think the only way to great love is through great suffering. And that seems to be the pattern. And through this time of great suffering, we get to suffer with others. But my hope and my prayer is that as we move through this, we will learn how to love at deeper levels, that we... We get to learn how to love at such a deep and profound way to change and alter people's lives through radical acts of generosity that this person writing a check to this person alters her suffering. It helps alleviate her suffering to a degree and helps her deal with her anxiety and her worry that maybe for this next month, it's just one less thing she has to think about. But if we think about even the small gifts that we can offer to people and moments where we can say, hey, I was thinking about you and I wanted to call you and check in on you and see how you're doing. And my friends, this is, we have to stay connected through this time. And because of the modern era that we live in, we get to be connected via our phones and our computers and to stay, um, to stay connected as best as we can, to share stories of encouragement and hope. I, I want to hear stories of encouragement. I need encouragement just like you of where do you see God at work? Where Where is God moving in our midst? And maybe we can share that through Facebook and just calling each other and say, my gosh, the Spirit laid, me, laid you in my heart and I wanted to see how you're doing. If there's anything you need, can I pray with you? Um, can I listen to you? Can I be in this with you? My hope, friends, is that through this season, however long we're here, that we would continue to be light in the world, that it wouldn't stop, that our, our light would uh, grow in a just a more intensity and deeper and brighter. Um, as the world gets darker and darker, the light would grow even stronger and stronger, and that we would draw from Jesus and we would draw from one another. I, I hope and pray that that story inspires you, that that story invites you into radical generosity, because I know Hillside, you are a generous people. I've seen it, I've been on the receiving end of it, and um, I'm so grateful for all the ways that you continue to bless people around you and bless your community. You are, you are all kinds of good. You are all kinds of good, my friends. Don't ever forget that. Um, Man, and I miss you all. I miss you all so much. I miss seeing your faces. I miss being in the room with you and uh, experiencing the presence of Christ with you and singing with you, praying with you, and how I long for the day when we finally get to return back to one another. And um, man, what a day of rejoicing that's gonna be, right? When we get to experience each other's presence again. But until then, my heart is with you and... Um, I will continue to pray for you and I will continue to think of you. And every time I remember you, um, joy will fill my heart. I know it. And I want you to be blessed today. I want to sing a song to you. 
and uh, give you this gift as a, a benediction um, to sing over you today. This is a song that a friend of ours wrote um, years ago, about 30 years ago, and it's just called The Benediction. And so I want to, instead of giving you the benediction, I want to sing the benediction to you today. So receive this as a, as a gift. My friends may grow in grace In the knowledge of our Lord and Savior My friends may grow in grace In the knowledge of Jesus Christ Grace and peace be with you, friends. Until next time, we'll see you on Sunday.